YouTube, what's up? It's your boy QZ. Welcome back to our complete map guide series. Today, we're covering Ridgeview Court. Uh, everything you need to know about the breaker spawns, hiding spots, curse possession spawns, and a couple tips and tricks you need to know about it. So uh, enough pitter patter, chitter chatter. Let's dive right in. Okay, I'm playing on custom settings. Uh, it's custom amateur settings preset. The breaker starts on and I have all curse possessions turned on so that I can show you where all of them spawn now because I don't want anybody being like, wait, uh, I only have one curse possession. That's because that's how it's supposed to be. So first and foremost, uh, this is another map that has three hide or not hiding spots, breaker spawns, okay? There's not one that's more common than the other. And I'm pretty sure the ghost just touched that door, so I might die. So the first breaker spawn is going to be here in the garage, right next to the motorcycle <sighs> placard thing, whatever. All right. The other two are going to be down in the basement. The The first one is for sure. The second one, I'm not entirely sure about it. This is just from past experience. I'm pretty sure I've seen it on this other side before. So this is the other potential spawn uh, down here in the basement. You come down, take a right, as you just saw, and bada bing, bada boom. Now, the other one that I'm not sure is 100% confirmed. If it is, please let me know. I'm just kind of going off of my foggy memory, but I think it can also spawn right here. Okay, let me know in the comments if you've seen that. All right. So uh, while we're down here, let's talk about cursed possessions, okay? So down in the basement, as per usual on most maps with basements, is going to be the summoning circle. Straight ahead, you have the mirror. Right here to the left in the utility closet, you have the Ouija board in the laundry room. At the front door, you got this nice little set of terror cards, my favorite cursed possession in the game. And then upstairs are the... La oh, just kidding. Down here, around the corner from the Ouija board. Sitting on this little bench is this little guy, the voodoo doll, he's chilling. Now, upstairs are the last two, okay? I almost forgot. So at the top of the stairs, you go in this first bedroom on the left. On the nightstand thingy, you got the music box. Very nice, very lovely. I'm not going to turn that on. <laughs> I almost did. Okay, and then if you come across the hall into this room, on this desk is the monkey paw, okay? Now, hiding spots. You got, obviously, closets, as per usual in this guide, okay? And, again, the recurring theme is anything that breaks the ghost line of sight is going to be a, a hiding spot. As long as you have your, your equipment off and the ghost can't hear you talking, so, like, having push to talk on, or et cetera, uh, it's going to be a good chance of your survival. So, you can separate yourself from the ghost and use your ears. You can, honestly, just hide in a corner. Um, but, yeah, so closets are going to be good. Obviously, here on... Ridgeview. Let's see. I don't think there's any like official hiding spots on the like on the upstairs portion. There was one time I I don't know how I did it, but I got on this bed somehow. They must have fixed it, I think. But I got on the bed one time and stood or crouched like right here and the ghost came in the room and like walked away from me. It was awesome. Um, while we find some more hiding spots. The other thing too, again, I mentioned it in the Tanglewood video, bone spawns are not set in stone. Um, so it's a good rule of thumb to just check the whole house and every single room for the bone because as you saw up there, the bone was on the bed kind of near the pillows. Um, but it's not going to be the same every single time. So over here in the living room, you've got these, um, these containers. If you see these uh, totes, it is a hiding spot. Uh, since we're in the area, one of those makeshift hiding spots that I've talked about in this series that I like to do, and if you watch any of my streams when I play on this map, one of my go-to ones, since I never play with hiding spots on, is gonna be to come over here into the kitchen and chill right next to the fridge. Now, I have been killed in this hiding spot before for reasons I don't really know, but it does work some of the time. I would say about 80% of the time, the ghost never comes over here and kills you, okay? The other one that's a makeshift hiding spot that I like to use is over here by the piano. You can actually come over here next to the piano and it looks like you can't fit, but lo and behold, you can hide in the curtains and you too are now a ghost, all right? Uh, again, I would treat this like the fridge hiding spot where I would say maybe 80% of the time, the ghost isn't gonna it's come over here and koozie. kill you. That is true, Jaeger. Thank you, man. Um, but yeah, and then obviously here in the garage, you got lockers here. You got lockers here. Uh, no looping spots in the garage. You can't loop it around the cars. Um, in fact, 
Ridgeview and Edgefield don't really have good looping spots. It does have a coffee table. So if you're an extreme looper, you can loop it around the coffee table. You, I normally loop my ghost around this table here because this is also really good for checking for poltergeist because if it is a poltergeist and it's the first time, this goes, if it's if it's poltergeist, it's either gonna clear off the table or fling the fork all the way over to the window. If it does that, it's it's a poltergeist, dude, 100%. Um, yeah, and then back upstairs, there's not really any looping spots or we've already covered all the hiding spots. Um, down in the basement, you've got a couple different lockers there. You've got a hiding spot over here in the back left, well, back right corner of the uh, of the basement and then obviously if you're feeling frisky you can try to loop it around these shelves but i'm not that psychotic so and then over here the hell was that noise okay i'm gonna get out of here but uh yeah i think i mean this would probably be a good little loop zone you could do that if you're if you're feeling a little frisky but for the for the most part just rely on the hind spots okay most common areas for me to get the ghost, I haven't included this in any of the episodes, but I would, and because it's different for everybody, but let me know your most common areas, like your most common ghost rooms. But for me, sometimes uh, it's either gonna be here, like in the living room front area. Uh, most of the time I've had it in the hallway up here. And if that's the case, any sort of hallway ghost is just a death sentence for you if you're not that experienced with the game. Um, so yeah, good luck, buddy. But that pretty much covers everything. We covered all the cursed possessions, all of that stuff. So with that said, if you are a low level player and you want to know how to level up as fast as you can with what you have, you can check out this video right here. And if you missed any of the previous episodes in this map guide series, you can click on this playlist. It'll take you right to it. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you over there.